So since we're given f double prime and a value of f prime, well then we can just essentially do the last couple of problems from yesterday where f prime is playing the role of what we called y or whatever. And that'll give us a function for f prime and then we can repeat the process. Okay, so let's notice that we know that f prime has the following form, essentially just by taking the antiderivative of this right-hand side. So we can apply the power rule, and we'll have a quarter x to the fourth for the first term, and then minus two x squared plus three x for the next two terms, again, using the power rule, plus a constant c. So we have to have a constant c. And you can actually kind of do this all at once and take the antiderivative again and get down to f, f of x with no prime, right? So if you take two derivatives, you get the second derivative, but then you can essentially like take two antiderivatives and get back. There's like no name for like a double antiderivative. So generally you wouldn't say anything about it. Okay, so anyway, we've got this point right here, but let's maybe go ahead and use this fact that f prime of one is equal to zero to get us a final version of f prime. So let's see. If we plug one into that, we should get zero. So that gives us the equation zero is equal to f prime of one, which is also equal to a quarter minus two plus three plus a constant, right? But now, well, we can, you know, add these numbers together and let's see, uh, three minus two is one plus a quarter is five fourths. So we have five fourths plus C is equal to zero. That tells us that C is equal to negative five over four. And then uh, putting this all together, we see that that means that F prime of X is equal to quarter x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 3x uh, minus 5 over 4. So there's, we, there's where we are for our f prime function. 